welcome. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. And today, we have a... <laughs> I'm not sure how we missed the whole setup of this. Um, I think there was a... Something happened, I don't know what. Um, but I had to be cautious. Okay, first off, the colors had to be moved over to the right hand side and an equal number of those strings had to be moved over to the left hand side in order to make it so that way there was an equal amount of strings so you get the right kind of v-shape the next thing i had to watch out for is because my strings are doubled um they both start off very very pink and i had almost forgotten the fact that i had used variegated strings in this and was like you know kind of looking at it and when I realized, wait a second, I have to pair these up properly because despite the fact they both start off kind of pink, two of them go off into a purple color and two of them go off into a red color. And so if I had mixed that up, they both would be mixing kind of the same, right? They would both be, a, a you know, kind of pink and, and purple and and then our pink, well, they'd be purple and red and and the other would be purple and red. So this way, one goes off and starts to become purple, one goes off and becomes red. Super cool. Definitely recommend this. This is was fun. And you'll see this as we kind of get further into it. Um, overall, the pattern itself is not super difficult. And once you kind of get into the rhythm, it's okay. And you might actually want to watch how I do the segmenting to do this. Because honestly, I think I really nailed it. I think I really came into this and just overanalyzed and whatever it was, I got to it. And you'll see how I kind of do it in chunks. And it gives me the ability to do the, the longest kind of rows possible for that particular time. So yeah, that's super, super cool. Um, I would not say that this is overly difficult, but it's it's certainly not a beginner's thing. Um, oh, and the background color I used, obviously I used the, the I don't wanna say white, but it's, it's a little bit off white. It's a little ever so slightly towards gray. Um, I would like to say that, um, the, that color, that that white, the background, does those strings didn't need to be extra long. They get broken up enough, and you could, in fact, switch them if you needed to. However, the gray that's down the middle, um, that one for sure got used absolute most. And then pretty much the two color ones and the other grays all got used pretty good. Mind you again. I cut my strings in thirds, and so I did not have any trouble. I, I was not, my, my tassels are plenty long. Everything was good there. Just a heads up in case, you know, you're trying to make this. Um, it's a fun pattern. It's a very pretty pattern. I definitely think the variegated makes it more fun. As you can kind of already see, the, the red is starting to come in on the left hand side over there and you can kind of see in the strings that the purple is not far behind so it really starts out sort of the pinks and then it starts to fade in and then it becomes very very dark and that kind of happens for the rest of the bracelet mind you this variegated string i'm going to guess it came from china i can't I can't say definitively if I know where I got it from. Um, I know that there was a bunch of strad string that we got here in Singapore. It went on sale. Um, most likely that still came from China anyways, even though it's like a local reseller thing. Um, I, I can't say for sure where it came from, but it doesn't change very quickly. Um, this particular pattern might have actually been fun if for some reason it did change quickly 
right? If you could fit more different combinations as it went through, I think that would be neat. I do like the notion though, that the gray was a solid and the background was a solid. If you tried, if you tried to make the background variegated, honestly, it will look terrible. It will look like it's filled with mistakes because you can't, you can't necessarily get things to kind of come together. You'll see there's another bracelet coming up that um, I'm going to do variegated with. Um, and they're going to try to cross over each other. And because you can't make the change happen necessarily where you want it to be, you have to kind of roll with the punches and choose which knot is the one that's crossing over. So if you have like a very dark, dark coming this way and a light coming this way, you have to choose which one and it's going to make it look like one's going over top of the other as opposed. But when you're doing a background, all of them could be going in all different directions and all different ways. And that's, yeah, that's, that's not going to be good. That's not going to give you the effect that you want. But in this case, because it's a nice continuous row and it's slowly making the changes, it adds interest and it makes it so that way the, you can appreciate that gradual change going through it. And like I said, if you try to make the, the gray a variegated, um, I think you start to take away from the whole notion of that, that the subtlety of the other two that are changing. It st starts to become like everything is cascading in different whatever ways and stuff. And I'm, that's a personal opinion. You could try it. You might even, if you did it with maybe like different kinds of variegated string, I could see that could potentially kind of work out because again, the gray is, is coming down in that same fashion. It's not crossing over itself a lot or anything. Um, but I do think that there is something about the fact that the solids really emphasize the fact that the other ones are changing. I think that's what's really making this one very, very cool. And I like it. I, I would totally rock this one. This is, that is very, very cool. Of course we did put a Kumi on it and, um, it's, an eight string bracelet or 16 strings coming down. So that makes it perfect for doing kumis. Um, in fact, my wife even tried to make the kumi sort of blocky, kind of like how the bracelet is, which brilliant. I, I'm kudos to her for her talent on uh, kumi making because that's really intense and very, very, very cool. Um, It does feel pretty repetitive because it is. Um, does it, did it feel like it took very long? Not really. It wasn't so bad. I don't think, um, I don't remember exactly how much time went into it. I don't think it was too terribly bad, but. kind of is what it is. I mean, a 16 string bracelet usually is what, like an hour and a half or so, something like that, hour and 45. So not too terribly bad. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, again, Segmenting it, I really do think, helped to make this thing kind of move along really, really well. Honestly, that's, if if nothing else, just kind of watch how I go through this, how I got that side down and then the pieces and, and the different things going in here. It's, it really kind of helps make this thing kind of chug along. Oh, and I tried to be kind of consistent in the way that, I bring was bringing the the background colors outwards. Um, 
it made the back pretty cool, honestly. Um, but it also helps to keep the, the bracelet really, really straight. Um, obviously, I don't do that thing with the straight edge where you bounce it back in or do whatever. That's just weird. Um, but I still have very, very straight bracelets. And why is because I don't kind of willy-nilly... Because, again, a white-to-white -white knot can go any direction you want. Does It really technically shouldn't matter. However consistency matters if you keep changing how that works it will give a different effect to it also if you try to make it always come inwards as opposed to always going outwards it will be ever so slightly different um but as long as you're consistent with it it'll still look good it'll still be nice so there you have it i mean just consistency is the key so I guess, I guess that was a long ramble version of just trying to say that consistency is the key. So, yeah. And in case you didn't know, I made this while on a live stream, but not a regular public live stream like the Saturday ones. Um, if you haven't noticed, I do bags on Saturday nights. I hang out with you guys and we do bags and stuff. But on the weekdays, like today, I am making live streams for YouTube members. And they can come in and they can watch me record. And in fact, potentially they could be watching me record this right now. Um, and see how it's all done. See how I put it together. See what happens behind the scenes. So that's the thing. If you're interested, um, it's the link next to the subscribe button on YouTube. So it just says join. And then you become a member. And it's like $5 a month. Well, it's $5 Singapore. So I think it's like $4 USA. So. But yeah. So yeah, I made this all during a, a live stream talking to people I might have been watching cartoons at the time and talking about how wowed I was by what was happening in the thing I do that a lot um got some plans for watching some stuff there's a couple movies apparently I didn't see that uh I'm kind of really looking forward to so yeah when I make bracelets I get to watch things if I'm doing voiceovers like this where I'm talking about what I made I don't get to watch anything because I have to concentrate and talk and try to remember things like, like thanking my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members for making this possible. We're obviously past the halfway point and these videos end really abruptly. So I have to remember to thank everybody for your support. Um, despite being monetized, you would be very surprised how very, very little that pays. And so it is the support of the members and the Patreon people who actually helped contribute to making all of this possible. So thank you very much, guys. I uh, honestly, I can't thank you guys enough. It's, uh, it's really what keeps everything going here. So thank you. So yeah, you can see like that's, I've done the little, the little patch where I, it's, you know, the color and then I bring the white ones out and then there's a longer white one will come out. That is the, the break in between the color ones and then do the, the little block. Cause it's just little blocks. It's like two, not two, not, and then a, something in between, which is neat. It's, it's cool. Oh, and by the way, if you hadn't noticed it snuck in there, right? The purple came in strong, like really, really quick while the red was still kind of, kind of one side had come in, but not the other one. So you had the red and pink combos. So it kind of speckled for a little bit and then came in strong. And that lasts until the end of the, the bracelet. So it's, it's very pink at the top and then it's very colorful, red and purple at the bottom, which again, I just think that's super, super cool. That just makes it kind of wow. 
Kind of like, wait, didn't we do our thumbnail like that? I don't remember. Seems to me like the thumbnail was sort of a fade coming across. So, yeah. Kind of fulfilled its little own thing. Um, not sure where we are in this. Again, because it's so repetitive, like trying to keep track of where you are in the pattern, that could be a thing. I was just kind of watching my pattern and kept scrolling, and that's how I kept count. Um, I could see that being a thing if you're like trying to work off of a phone or whatever else, you would just have to like count how many times it was, oops, how many times it kind of came to the one side to know when you're coming, uh, you know, close to the end. Um, that would be like the alternative way of figuring this thing out. But you can see, do the two squares, bring these white ones in so that way I can bring the long white one through. It's, uh, there, if it's consistent, if nothing else, it is very, very, very consistent. Um, trying to think what else is like pertinent to it it wasn't like i said it wasn't overly difficult and once you kind of got into the groove it was fine yeah this first kind of row you have to do the little where it bounces do the white row in do the, the little black do the white row in make it bounce again bring the long gray in it's It's kind of easy. I could see, though, honestly, if you hadn't, if you had just tried to work this off of the pattern, you watched the other video and you were like, okay, I got this. I could see where people could get confused and try to bring it down in other ways, maybe. Honestly, I this would be the easiest. This would be the way to make it just so much smoother, so much easier. Trying to figure out where, is this almost the end? It feels like we're getting close to the end. The fact that I didn't do the white ones at the end of the left-hand side kind of make me think it is because I wanted to make the last row of the white ones that come down on that side be a solid row. So I think that's where we are. Again, I've lost count of how many things there were, so I don't know. But that seems to be the case. I'll know in a moment, I think. Yeah, I'm putting the strings aside. Those strings are done. Um, and so I'm like trying to make sure that I, I keep that out of the, the thing. I, is that right, though? That both of those were out already? interesting anyway we are getting close to the end there'll be a big reveal it's has been awesome hopefully you guys enjoyed the video um i obviously have fun making this stuff so you know that is what it is and thank you for hanging out so long it really does help the channel makes youtube think that there's something quality that keeps you guys around so thank you very much for that um but yeah, this is this is coming into the end. And uh, yeah, I just I could have brought the white one like a little further down and done whatever. But you'll see that like it just having that whole straight row again was about kind of pulling it all together and making it nice and straight. So just a little tip there. All right, guys, have a good one. And uh, as always, don't get your strings in a bunch. <laughs>